Okay, so sticking with today's theme of talking about younger prospects in the NHL, I know the last video was about Nuge and Hopkins, but the one before that was going over a prospect. I wanted to continue the conversations on young guys in today's final video of the show. We're heading over onto the West Coast and going over to the LA Kings, talking about a guy that we've already had our fair share of conversations about, but just kind of resolving and responding to an idea that was published on LA Hockey Now the other day, asking whether or not this guy is running out of time. Now, that happens to be one of my favorite Tyler the Creator songs, so I can't promise that I'm not going to make some accidental Tyler the Creator reference, but you've been warned, we'll just say. So, without further ado, let's head over onto Austin Stanovich's most recent piece from yesterday on LA Hockey Now, LA Kings forward Arthur Kaliev could be running out of time in LA. And right away, the reason I saw this article pop up on my timeline was because it was posted onto the LA Kings subreddit. Now, don't ask me why I'm on the LA Kings subreddit, but I was there. And I saw, firstly, the title. I was like, oh, that's an interesting piece. Let's click on it. Let's read it. Read through the piece. And then I saw the comments on the LA Kings sub. A lot of them seem to be pretty frustrated with this piece, but we'll get into that as we go forward into the video. Before we dive into the article, though, let's talk about Arthur Kalia first and foremost. He is a 21-year-old forward, 6'2", 209, left-handed shot who plays on either wing. He's a powerful shot, and this has always been the defining quality of Kaliev's game, as back when he was drafted in the 2019 NHL entry draft, a lot of people, myself included, said that he was one of, if not the absolute best goal scorers in the draft. Now, in my opinion, I had Kaliev as the second best goal scorer behind Cole Caulfield, but the interesting thing to note about that is that I thought that Kaliev had the better shot. There's a difference, you know, there's a very slight nuance between saying that somebody is a better scorer versus saying somebody has a better shot. Scoring kind of revolves around everything, positioning, puck skills, what you do when you don't have the puck, how you're able to maneuver when you're with the puck, how you're able to convert everything we had just talked about into goals. That is what a goal scorer does. Arthur Kaliev had the benefit of being the better shot, in my opinion. Just having the pure ability to snap it by goalies, load up and fire, and find corners with pinpoint accuracy. This is because back in 2019, when Kaliev was in his draft-eligible year, he had 102 points and 51 goals in 67 games played. He was a goal-scoring machine, and because of this, I was like, yeah, this guy could be a top 10 talent, maybe top 15, if he gets really unlucky. Now, don't get me wrong, there were a few issues to Kaliev's game back in this time frame. There were problems with his defensive coverage, his defensive engagement, what he would be like when he didn't have the puck, stuff like this that really held him back from being amongst the top of the crop in terms of projection. But when it came to ceiling, a lot of people said, hey, this guy could be going out there and maybe having one of the top scoring ceilings in this year's draft. Alas, the problems with him and his defensive situation weighed heavily on those making the draft choices, which is why he dropped to 33rd overall. I said it was a steal right when the pick was made, and it appears that a lot of people seem to have agreed since the 2019 draft has come and gone. Ever since then, he had played more in the OHL with Hamilton, he had played with the Ontario Reign. Last season, he suited up for the Kings in an 80-game campaign, getting 14 goals and 27 points. This season, he bested his point production in a significantly fewer amount of games played. 56 games, 13 goals, and 15 assists for 28 total points, so he literally was at half a point a game. For a guy that's only 21 years old and wasn't given the most significant ice time this year, that's honestly a pretty alright number. But we're going to go back over onto the article and see what Stanovich writes when it comes to Arthur Kaliev and whether or not he really is quote-unquote running out of time. The article brings this up. With a few high-end tools, one world-class tool, and some obvious deficiencies, Arthur Kaliev was always a boom-or-bust type pick. It's why he fell to the second round despite a stellar draft year, leading all under-18 players in goals and points in the OHL. Heading into his third NHL season soon, it's getting close to the point where we find out if he booms or busts, at least with the Kings. The article talks about how he had came into camp, he lost his spot in the third line to Gabe Velarde, he then started the season on the fourth line, earned a cup of coffee on the top line, fell back down the lineup, and then broke his foot. And that kind of derailed his season, he never looked the same after returning, and as a player who struggles with foot speed to begin with, losing a step because of injury, 
I mean, the article says it killed him, but he's still alive today, I'm pretty sure, so that's a little hyperbolic, but you get what the article is trying to say. He had spent chunks of the end of the season scratched and only featured in two playoff games. Granted, Todd McClellan did clarify that Kaliev came out of the lineup because of subpar play, but was held out of the lineup because of an illness. The article then brings up a few other points to take into consideration. How even though his point production looks good, a significant chunk of his goals came on the power play, making it a little less impressive. His possession metrics were not as great as they were last year, and his defensive impact was significantly worse analytically this year compared to last. Like most of his struggles last season, I think that a lot of negative defensive impact comes from an injury. Once he lost a step, he ended up chasing the game a lot more, and was caught out of position because of it. As ever, you want to see more even strength production from Kaliev and improvements in his own zone, but it's difficult to be overly critical of him given that injury. The article then brings up a few points of views. There's a pessimistic point of view and an optimistic point of view. How you could say that there's a logical argument as to why both views are valid. And realistically, it's ultimately up to the coaching staff of the Kings to decide what happens next. Let's briefly skim over the optimistic point of view on Kaliev because there's a quote here from... Todd McClellan that I really like. When asked about Kaliev's future with the Kings, McClellan was clear that he still believed in the guy. He says this, I think that Arthur Kaliev can be an impactful NHL player, and it's not only can be, but we need him to be. And it's our job as a coaching staff to get him there. Development team, everybody else to get him there. And we'll do everything in our power to get him there. We need him there. And the other side of the coin is his participation, and I think he would be open to that. Now, the writer here, Stanovich, does a fantastic job deeply analyzing both the pessimistic and the optimistic point of view for Kaliev and next season, and there's a very good conclusion written at the end here, too. I'll highly recommend you go out there and read this article. The link is in the description. I can't really do it justice by just trying to summarize it because there's so much good content here digesting his game. But if you go over to the LA Kings subreddit and you read some of the comments that were made on this article, the first one that comes to mind is the first one on the post. Andrew does it says, maybe the Kings should actually let him have some ice time to develop at the NHL level, but we won't. I'm afraid this team is going to go downhill fast after promoting Sturm to head coach for the rain, at least with our young talent. Mike from Earth replies saying this, you do realize it's a trade-off between letting him get top-line minutes and our team potentially not competing, right? It's not as easy as just play him and he'll be amazing. There are other huge factors to consider. This is why I wanted to go out there and read this comment thread though, because Andrew does its reply has an interesting perspective to combat that. That's coaching's job. You're supposed to develop players while in a rebuild. We technically are still in the rebuild. We neglected the young talent we've had since 2018, and it's showing. That's my biggest issue with Todd and the other coaching staff. We've been stagnant with no path forward. No superstar to talk of other than who we already have as main goal scorers or defenders. Our coaching staff has let us down in development and making changes. If we had actually done the right development path back in 2019 and brought our younger players up, we'd actually be contenders for the cup. For whatever reason, we have never brought them up in here we are. We can have all the number one picks in the league, but that does nothing without proper development and coaching. Look at Edmonton. They have two generational talents and a skilled team around them, but defensive coaching failed them. We're fairly well-rounded, but we have no depth because of how we've wasted these kids' time with the rain instead of taking the hit in 2019-2021 when we were already the joke of the league. Now, this is a very, um, how do I say it? Passionate perspective, let's just say. And what he's trying to say, Andrew does it, is, is that the LA Kings almost already screwed over Kaliev with the way they tried to develop him over the past few years, not giving him significant NHL minutes and not giving him the opportunity to grow. However, this previous season with the injury slowing him down, I definitely think it's more acceptable to give Kaliev the pass for this year rather than put a whole bunch of expectations on him for next year. I think the article that we had talked about on LA Hockey Now kind of implies a more dire sense of urgency than really exists in this situation. Kaliev does indeed expire at the end of 2024, so he's got one more season left on that ELC. But this is a player that, considering the belief that the coaching staff has in him, the prospect profile that he has always been ever since getting taken in 2019, and just with the importance he has on that power play, it doesn't really signify to me that the end is nigh anytime soon, but that's just my opinion. We went over an entire article talking about this, so link is in the description if you want to go ahead and read it, but thoughts in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on Kaliev, his development, and where you go from here? LA Kings fans, I want to see what y'all have to say. Let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 99.
and bye.